Hello board game brothers and sisters and welcome to another episode where I'll be letting you know of Kickstarter's launching this week. We do this each week and if you're new here there's a ton of giveaways that we do at the end of each video so there's a lot to look forward to. Subscribing and hitting that bell icon is the best way to catch up on these videos each week so if you find these useful I truly appreciate the support. But let's get to it and check out the Kickstarters. And starting with June 5th we have Moonstone the Arising Expansion and this plays 2-4 to four players and takes about 40 to 120 minutes to play. And this is an expansion to to the game Moonstone, which is a fantasy skirmish game where players lead a troop of fairy tale inspired characters across different landscapes like farmsteads, town centers, or dark forests in search of the Moonstones. Characters in this game all have different stat cards, which dictate the number of cards they can draw for combat, their range, as well as arcane and defensive advantages. This game primarily uses cards rather than dice, which opens up different possibilities such as hidden information, simultaneous reveal, or bluffing. On a player's turn, they'll spend energy to perform different actions or navigate the play area, claim towns and fields, engage in combat, and collect the most moonstones. This expansion adds a brand new rule set for campaign play with a 50 page storyline, 10 new scenarios, rules and biographies for 55 different characters, as well as tweaks and clarifications to the existing rules. This campaign also introduces a campaign deck for more drama and events, and an upgrade deck to augment your characters, and some really cool exclusive miniatures. And on June 7th, we have a campaign for the Lonely Undead, and this plays 1-4 to four players and takes about 60-90 to 90 minutes to play. And in this game, players have recently become a zombie, and as you might expect, you're lost, confused, lonely, and, well, misunderstood. Unknown to all the living, breathing humans, all the zombies really want are friends. And it's not their fault that the only way they know how to make friends is through biting and scratching the living. The game is played over two phases. During the first phase, players take turns moving across the town, gathering resources, and infecting the locals. Each living human has their own set of attributes and bonuses that you're going to have to try to beat in order to make dinner friends out of them. You'll have to be careful though because not all these living humans are as kind and looking for friendship as you are and this really comes to light during the second phase where the town has their turn and will retaliate against your efforts. Be the first zombie to make seven friends and you win the game. And next we have Alien Exiles and this plays two to four players and takes about 10 to 25 minutes to play. And this is a quick card game where aliens have been exiled from their planet and they're trying to blend into your planet and make it their new home. Players are going to take on the role of planetary governments trying to avoid occupation by these aliens and on a player's turn they can either draw cards from a shared pool or play cards from their hand with various abilities. Drawing cards grants more options to a player but it comes with the risk of inadvertently coming into contact with these aliens and if that happens too many times your planet will be overtaken by the alien invasion and you'll be eliminated from the game. In this game, you want to be the last player standing, and if you can do that, you win the game. Also on the 7th, we have Heroes of Barcadia, and this plays 2-6 to six players and takes about 30-90 to 90 minutes to play. And in Heroes of Barcadia, a band of monsters has stolen all the drinks and is hoarding them somewhere in a dangerous dungeon. Players will race to explore the randomly generated dungeon, battle monsters and bosses with dice rolling, and collect power-ups to help themselves or hinder their opponents. The game comes with a drinking glass for each player with different measurements to help keep track of your health. Losing health means you drink, and to win the game you want to be the first player to reclaim all the stolen goods. And now we have a ton of campaigns launching on the 8th and the first one is called Boardmaster. And Boardmaster is a modular board that allows you to set up and play 50 different abstract strategy games from all over the world. The board comes with an illustrated hardcover book that outlines the different games along with their types, duration, difficulty, and location of origin. The book also provides instructions on how to play these games and also how to set up the board. The board doubles as a storage solution and the different tokens and tiles required to play all the different games are stored inside so that you're always ready to go. Everything sits very flush together, which initially made me think that this was a tablet, but the tiles are actually made out of the same material as Lego and are designed with a chamfer on the backside so that they can be easily lifted from the board. This is a really neat idea, and if you want to check out the campaign, I have links to all these campaigns in the description below. Next is Edict Solar Contention, and this plays 2-5 to five players and takes about 100-180 to 180 minutes to play. And Edict is a competitive strategy for X game where players each lead a powerful organization geared with space travel technology and tasked with exploring and exploiting the solar system. And the goal of this game is to become the most dominant commercial space empire. Each organization plays a little bit differently and has their own unique abilities and strategies and to win a game, players will be developing their engineering capabilities, their infrastructure, and management as they research future tech and deliver resources back to Earth. 
This campaign will be offering an early bird if you back in the first seven days. And this is going to be Elon Musk's Space Y organization board with special abilities granted through the Boring Company and Neuralink. But please note that this game cannot be purchased with Dogecoin. Also on the 8th is Blooming Industry, and this plays 2-6 to six players and takes about 30-60 to 60 minutes to play. And in this game you'll be using grid movement, pattern building, and tile and worker placement to plant and harvest tulips from your farms and transport them by boat along the canals, and then sell them to the market to gain the most profit. Tulip prices decrease as tulips of the same colors are sold, so you're going to want to move quickly to be the first to sell your tulips. The game takes place over three phases, the gather phase where players will be collecting tiles from a reserve and tile deck, and then there's the plant phase where players can seed the tile by placing it according to its placement rules, or reseed an existing tile by stacking a new tile on top of it. And then finally there's the farm phase where players can harvest by placing a farmer onto one of their tiles to gain tulips, or they can perform the build action by placing a farmer on a windmill, or they can transport their tulips by moving up to three boats, one tile each. When reaching the market, you trade in your tulips for the highest available token for its color, and the player that gains the most points at the end of the game wins the game. And the next campaign is called Iraq and Wars, and this plays 2 to 4 players and takes about 30 to 45 minutes to play. And Iraq and Wars is a tactical card game where two players duel for dominance of the world. Each player is going to create an army of 23 cards that they will be deploying to fight, cast spells, and counter the plans of their opponent. This game uses specific placement rules that players must follow as they place their cards out on the battlefield. Players will be trying to get as many of their cards onto the battlefield while eliminating their opponents. And the player with the most cards on the battlefield at the end of 9 rounds wins the game. And then also on June 8th we have Deliverance, and this plays 1-4 to four players and takes about 60-120 to 120 minutes to play. And this one's also going to be our Discord Pick of the Week. If you'd like to vote on the upcoming weeks, definitely check out our Discord, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But this is a cooperative game of Heaven vs Hell where players take on the role of powerful angels to fight back against Satan's demons. The story is based around demons corrupting the holy saints of earth, taking control of them to use them against you and the heavenly realm. The goal of the game is to free these saints and return them to the path of salvation. And in this game, players are going to be choosing their heroes, each with their own unique abilities and stats. And players are going to be working together to fight back against these demons, which are controlled by the game's AI. The demons are all going to act according to their own individual skill trees that change their behavior and make them more challenging the longer that they remain on the board. So players are going to want to move swiftly to take out the demons in their weakest form whenever they can. Making a successful turn also presents players with options for leveling up their angels, and the biblical theme is something that I don't see too often in dungeon crawlers, and it's supported with a majority of characters being straight from the text, complete with fully fleshed out backstories. Powerful prayer cards are also used throughout the game, which also feature scripture flavor texts, which give a clue of what they might do. This theme isn't something that I'm particularly invested in personally, but I can really appreciate the creator's execution on this, and this is not what I would have expected if someone told me, let's play a game about angels. But this epic badass play on it does get me pretty excited to try it out. The characters in this game are also brought to life with some really cool miniatures, and the publishers have already provided both the rulebook and digital versions of the game on their website, which is awesome and it gives me a ton of confidence in their testing. And it's a reason why there's so many reviews on their rating page on BGG, and this is also the reason that it's also going to be my pick of the week. And I have to say, a lot of people seem to like this game. If this is a game that you've been hoping to be hyped about, definitely stop by and check out some of the comments here. And also, if you want to get hyped up about great deals on board games, make sure to check out kickstartergames.com because they're a sponsor of the channel. And if you're looking to purchase some games, using the code SHELFCLUTTER will get you a whopping 15% off your entire cart. It's definitely worth checking them out to get the best prices that you're going to be able to find. A small portion of any sales made here will come back and help the channel. And I make all these videos completely free for publishers. So it's sponsorships like this and support from the awesome community that makes all this effort a little bit more sustainable. And I do not take any of that for granted so thanks for all the support so far. Feel free to also sign up to their newsletter it's a great way to stay up to date with the new releases other discounts and anyone who signs up is also automatically entered in upcoming giveaways that are drawn each month. The website's kickstartergames.com and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Also on the 8th we have Skeptics and this plays 1-4 to four players and takes about 45-60 to 60 minutes to play. And Skeptics is a cooperative dice rolling game where players are paranormal investigators exploring potentially haunted locations to prove the existence of ghosts. Players will race against the clock, exploring rooms and rolling dice to match icon sets to search, reveal, and solve different clues. 
Environment cards are also drawn every in-game hour, which may have hazards or conditions making the game more challenging as they unfold. The players win the game if the existence of ghosts can be proven in time, but fail if the time runs out. And the next campaign is for traps, and in traps players take control of an adventurer and their animal sidekick. Players will be controlling their two characters separately, and both of these characters need to reach the final space in order to win the game. Each character has their own special ability to take advantage of, and on a player's turn they'll be using roll and move as the primary mechanism to try and reach the end of the jungle. Throughout the game, players will be drawing and purchasing trap cards which can be placed along the board, modifying spaces to make other players' journeys more treacherous. Action cards grant special one-time use abilities that can grant you extra moves or allow you to modify yours or someone else's movements. Treasure cards can also be gained which grant more purchasing power for buying cards in the future. Existing spaces on the board can protect you or harm you if you land on them, so you'll want to use your action cards wisely, and you'll want to have a little bit of luck on your side as well. And then we have Overstocked, which plays 2-6 to six players and takes about 20-30 to 30 minutes to play. And Overstocked is a small economic commodity speculation game where players must stay up to date with the latest 90s toy crazes. The game's going to play over six rounds, and each turn players are going to place a card either into their personal warehouse to increase the number of each toy that they have to sell, or they can place that card into a central demand area which will manipulate the market value of each toy, allowing you to sell your toys for more money. At the end of the game, once everyone has played all the cards in their hand, players are going to score points for the stock in their personal warehouses, and the more demand that there is for a toy, the more points it's going to score. There is a catch though, because the toy with the most demand is actually going to score negatively, so you're going to want to avoid stocking that one at all costs. This campaign is also going to be including a few different expansions and variant rules to add more complexity to the game. Continuing with Campaigns on the 8th is a set of three small card games that have been previously released in Japan, but are being kickstarted now to make them more available to the rest of the world. And these are called Margaret La Fee, Night Clan, and Latria. And Margaret La Fee is a push your luck card game for one to four players that takes about 15 to 60 minutes to play. And in this game you're going to be rescuing fairies from two castles, one of an evil witch and one of a king that has fallen for her lies. On your turn you're going to explore the two castles, each made with their own deck of cards. Some cards will be used to free fairies, while enemy cards may get in your way. Enemies each have a value, and if the total value is ever above 5, your turn ends immediately. However, you can use your magic once per turn to get rid of all enemy cards that have appeared so far. When you decide to stop drawing cards, you can attempt to rescue one fairy by spending cards from either of the castles to match its costs. The fairies then become available in your play area, and they can be used for their ability and victory points. The game ends when five fairies have been rescued. And Night Clan is a fast-paced area control game with a hint of deception where each player is dealt an identical deck of 13 cards. Players then take turns placing their cards, two at a time, on different locations. These cards each have different abilities like granting victory points or eliminating other cards at their location. Once all the cards have been played, the cards placed in each location are resolved and any remaining cards are used to determine which player has achieved victory in those locations. The player with the most victory points wins the game. And the third game is a drafting and betting game called Latria, where each player gets 10 cards from the deck, chooses a card to keep, and then passes the rest on to the next player until all cards are taken. Cards have values and gems on them, and the goal is to have the most gems at the end of the game. On a turn, a card is drawn from the top of a shared deck and placed face up on the table. Everyone will then select a card to place, and the person with the highest value receives all the cards played that turn and gains the gems that are displayed on them. This continues until all cards are played, and the person with the highest number of gems at the end of the game wins. And the last campaign for June 8th is Jackpot Payout, and this plays 1-4 to four players and takes about 30 minutes to play. And in this game, each player receives the same deck of starting cards and a play mat. On a player's turn, they draw the top three cards from their hand and place them into the three areas of their player board, which represents the three reels of a slot machine. If the three cards match, you hit the jackpot and those cards are placed in the player's scoring pile. Cards with coins on them count towards the player's total score, and if the cards do not match, then the player can purchase a card from the shared display. As the game goes on, players will be adding and removing cards from their decks, and players that do that well will be the ones that score the most jackpots. Once a player receives 12 coins, the game end is triggered and the final round takes place where players will be drawing cards and if a jackpot is scored you go again continuing to gain points until you don't get a jackpot. Special cards within the display allow players to break and bend the rules and the player with the most points at the end of the game wins the game. 
And then on June 9th, there's a campaign for Route 66, the Mother Road edition. And it was really difficult for me to find any info on this game or the campaign, but it's coming from Eagle Griffin Games, and it's advertised to combine Sid Saxon's Can't Stop and The Great Races into a brand new game. And finally on June 10th is Bushido the Card Game, and this plays 2-5 to five players and takes about 20-40 to 40 minutes to play. And Bushido is a blend of push your luck and strategy where each player is a potential samurai hoping to be the first to be recruited. Each turn you'll be rolling dice and deciding if you want to collect virtues which are needed to win the game, or you can activate daimyo abilities which alter the game to your advantage. Virtues can also change the game when collected and players can utilize their focus to try and force rerolls on opponents to change the outcome of their turns. Both Tabletopia and Tabletop Simulator versions of the game will be offered if you're interested in trying this one out for yourself and you can expect a couple expansions and stretch goals to add more content to the game. That's it for this week, but don't leave yet because we do have a few giveaways to announce. And the first one is Paris and the Paris Le Toll expansion, which is on Kickstarter now. And Paris is a medium weight euro with short player turns and players are wealthy real estate investors. And you'll be gaining points by purchasing and developing iconic buildings and landmarks through set collection and tile placement. This new expansion introduces a collection of bonus tiles, which play just like the bonus tiles in the existing game, but add more variety and replayability to the game. The expansion also adds strategy tiles, which give players unique player powers that can be used on their turn, but these powers can also be swapped with other powers throughout the game. And this giveaway is going to be for the Paris Big Box Deluxe Edition Pledge, which comes with the Paris Deluxe version of the game and the Le Toll expansion. And to enter this giveaway, just leave a comment down below with the hashtag Paris and speak French to me. And the next giveaway is for a pledge for Heroes of Sorcado, and this is an epic fantasy cooperative campaign that consists of eight adventures where players will build up their characters, acquire powerful spells and weapons, and increase their abilities by defeating monsters, evading traps, and navigating choice-driven events and side quests. Players will experience the campaign through the campaign book and through eight different adventure decks which each feature a different location. Players will want to complete that deck of cards and defeat the final boss in order to complete that location and move on to the next chapter of the story. And the publisher for this one wanted to offer something that you could get in your hands right away, so they're actually going to be offering a six pack of their previous games to whoever wins this giveaway. And they have close to 20 linked items on BoardGameGeek, so to enter this giveaway just leave a comment down below with the hashtag quests and leave me a comment with one of these games that most interests you. And the next giveaway we have is for Mechanical Beast, and this is a tile lane and tile manipulation game where players are a team of engineers along with their android helper, exploring the belly of a giant robot to find its control room and deactivate it. In the first half of the game, players will be laying tiles and navigating through them to try and find the off switch, but then as soon as that happens, the robot's going to begin shutting down, potentially locking our heroes inside unless you can get out quick enough. Players are going to be navigating the tiles and using special gears they find to try and modify and rotate the tiles in order to create better escape routes. And this giveaway is going to be for the Engineer Pledge, which comes with a copy of the game and all unlocked stretch goals. And to enter this giveaway, just check out the Discord in the description below and head over to the Giveaways channel, and all you have to do is click this little emoji underneath the post to get automatically entered into that giveaway. Also, we're getting really close to a thousand members on the Discord, so I'll definitely be doing something special to celebrate that. So make sure to subscribe because there'll definitely be some kind of really awesome giveaways to announce. So I thought I just filmed drawing the winners for last week's giveaway, but when I went to pause my camera, I realized that it wasn't filming at all. I didn't want to go back and refilm and redraw the winners because that felt insincere to the actual winners. So I'm just going to show you the screen recorded footage of that so you can see who actually won those giveaways. Good luck in the contests.